At the beginning of the 20th century, China was in turmoil. As the Qing dynasty tottered on the edge of collapse, it became ever clearer that the old ideas and values could not solve the problems the country faced. If the dynasty wanted to survive, it would have to accept radical modern ideas. One hundred and ten years ago, the city of Wuhan began an experiment with one of these new ideas. But, ironically, what had been intended to help save the Qing played a decisive role in the events that swept the dynasty from power in 1911. Join us as we explore the central role played by China's first ever modern police force in what would become known as the 1911 Revolution. A revolution that changed China for good and continues to shape our lives today. The city now known as Wuhan developed from three towns that grew up where the River Han flows into the Yangtze. The location of these towns meant that they were well placed to take advantage of trade coming up and down these mighty rivers. The towns prospered and eventually they merged together to form the port city we know today. More than 110 years ago, 28-year-old Deng Xiantai from Jingshan in Hubei got ready to say goodbye to his wife and six-year-old son. The journey he was about to embark upon would take him away from his family and a 10-year career in Hubei's new army, a career that he had excelled in and which had brought him to the attention of provincial governor Zhang Zhidong. Deng Xiantai, Zhang Zhidong decided, was just the sort of man he needed for his new police force. Nineteen hundred and two was a critical year in Chinese history. The Hongzhang, China's foreign minister and key reformer, lay dead one year before. Empress Dowager Cixi and her puppet reigning Emperor Guangxu had only recently returned to Beijing, a city which had been sacked and occupied by foreign Uxa uprising. Today, this is the headquarters of the Wuchang Division of the Wuhan City Public Security Bureau. More than a century ago, the headquarters of China's first modern police force was located here. The Wuchang Division of the Wuhan Police is responsible for almost a million and a half people scattered across 89 square kilometers. Over the years, it had its headquarters in a number of different locations. Now it has returned home to the birthplace of modern Chinese policing. In Deng Xiantai's day, Hankou was divided into five sovereign concessions, districts of the city administered by the British, Germans, Russians, French, and Japanese. These areas boasted modern banks, modern postal and telephone services, and of course, modern police. Zhang Zhidong was impressed with what he saw in the concessions. He believed that Chinese people should enjoy the benefit of these modern services, not just foreigners. In February 1902, 
He took a daring step forward in the modernization of the city by abolishing the old administrative system. Zhang Jidong unveiled plans for its replacement in Shanghai's newspaper on February the 5th. Zhang Jidong in Wuhan's administrative system was affected by the influence of the Chinese government. In the time of the Chinese Eastern government and the Chinese government, there was a lot of competition. It was called the Shang Zhan, the Shang Zhan, the Shang Zhan. 进站。At the turn of the 20th century, it was a region in transition, still scarred by the cataclysms of the Taiping Rebellion and the Opium Wars. Steam-powered vessels plied the river, foreign warships and gunboats docked at Hankou, and thanks to Zhang Zhidong's reforms, the banks of the Han River and Yangtze bristled with factory chimneys. So far, Zhang Zhidong had overseen the construction of the Luhan Railway and started the Hanyang Iron Guns Factory and the Daye Iron Ore Mines. Under his watch, Wuhan was becoming an industrial powerhouse. But if Wu Chang was developing economically and industrially, administratively it was lagging behind. As industrialization gathered pace, problems began to mount up, problems that were beyond the Chinese administrators. Prince was inadequate, the environment worsened, crime and disorder increased. The contrast between the Chinese districts and the concession areas was enormous. For a solution, Zhang Zhidong turned to the foreign concessions across the river for inspiration. What Wu Chang needed was a modern police force. The Wu Chang Police Force is mainly to clean the streets, to protect the citizens, to clean the streets, to clean the streets, 啊，消除疫力，啊，消防救灾，查缉奸盗等等，啊，他说这一切啊，无不为警察是举。Deng Xiantai was one of the first to be recruited to Zhang Jidong's new police force. Ten years before, he had arrived in Wuhan from a rural area to study. Unsure of his next step, he joined. The Hubei New Army. It was a good career move, with the country in chaos, promotion prospects were good, and he rose rapidly up the ranks. Now he was about to sail down the river and start all over again as a police cadet. His next port of call would be Nanjing. From there, he will go to Shanghai and then on to Japan. Deng Xiantai and his fellow recruits have been chosen because they had good service records and strong educational backgrounds. Previously, many would be sent to the Japanese military academies, but this time they were crossing the sea to become police cadets. What the future had in store for them when they returned to China was anyone's guess. Unlike the Northern Army, which tended to recruit from poor rural families, many of those enlisted in Hubei's new army came from relatively cultured and well-educated backgrounds. Compared with the others, the new Hubei army was an army of scholars. In those days, the journey from Hankou to Japan took at least two weeks, and police cadets were not the only passengers bound for Japan. 
One of the passengers, a student from Hunan, was to have a decisive effect on Deng Xiantai's outlook on life. His name was Huang Zheng, later to become famous as Huang Xing, the Qing Dynasty's second most wanted man. It was from this student that Deng Xiantai first heard of the word revolution. Back then, it was a shocking word, indistinguishable from rebellion. Yet, strangely enough, talk of rebellion didn't repel the would-be policemen. Over the course of the voyage, the pair were to become fast friends. And by the end of it, they were sworn brothers. By 1902, Japan had been reforming for almost 40 years. These far-reaching reforms began in the 1860s. The Japanese realized that they could not guarantee their independence unless they kept up with Western industrial and technological development. The reforms had been a stunning success. Already, the country ranked among the world's foremost industrial powers. Chinese reformers looked on eagerly and wondered what lessons they could learn. October 2012, a new intake of police cadets begins basic training. Four years of training lies ahead of them before they're ready to put theory into practice on the streets. 110 years ago, the training in Tokyo was to be no less rigorous. The cadets trained at the Kobun Institute, specially set up to cater for Chinese students. Here, Deng Xiantai and the other hand-picked police cadets would be drilled in the theory and practice of policing for the next two years. The Kobun Institute was located in the outskirts of Tokyo and half an hour away by train. Deng Xiantai's greatest trial, however, would be the separation from his family back home in China. Deng Xiantai was older than most of his fellow cadets. The big city lights of Tokyo held little attraction for a man with a wife and child. The new revolutionary politics that he'd heard about on the voyage to Japan was something else he tried to avoid. Having just come into property back home, the last thing Deng Xiantai wanted to do was rock the boat. In 1905, the Qing government abolished the imperial examination. In the same year, a record number of Chinese students took up studies in Japan, at least 10,000. According to Hu Hanmin, one of the key figures in China's revolutionary process, a variety of motivations brought the students to Japan. For some, it was the lure of wealth and power. Others were sincerely motivated by academic and scientific concerns. Many were convinced that the key to China's salvation and renewal lay in blindly copying everything Japanese. Some overseas students like Kang Youwei and Liang Qichao had already passed the imperial examination, but in the wake of the abolition of the exam and the shake-up of the bureaucracy, they now needed additional qualifications and expertise to bolster their positions. But for another group, the attraction of Japan was the freedom to become involved in revolutionary and seditious organizations out of reach of the Qing authorities. On August the 20th, 1905, Sun Yat-sen and Deng Xiantai's sworn brother, Wang Xing, founded the Chinese Revolutionary League.
many Chinese students regarded the overthrow of the Qing government as a sacred duty. Yang Shijie from Mianyang, Hubei, was one of these. Starting at the Kobun Institute three semesters after Deng Xianzai's arrival, he quickly threw himself into revolutionary politics. He was quick to draw attention to the leading role that Wu Han could play in an anti-Qing uprising. The Wuhan area is critical. Transport and communications are good. It bridges north and south. It has arsenals, the armory, newly trained ground forces, talented commanders trained in the new military academies, banks, mints, and stores. Control of the Wuhan area means control of the whole country. China's modern police force was born in. From the very beginning, Zhang Zhidong made sure that his new force would be completely separate from the traditional administrative system and based entirely on the Japanese police force. Zhang Zhidong Jianjin. In 1905, his studies in Japan completed, Deng Xiantai returned to Wuhan. He was not, however, destined for the beat. Instead, Zhang Zhizhong made him an instructor in the new Wuchang Police Academy. He又成立武昌高等警察学堂，对他们进行警察专业知识的教育和训练。这个警察学堂里面呢，除了这个他派到日本去留学归来的一批警察大学生当老师以外啊，还专门从日本的一些警戒这个资深警戒人士啊来当
，有一个比较普遍的理解，当用当时的啊半文不白的话来说，就是“妇孺闻革命，莫不涉喜”。可见呢，当时啊新闻媒体对观念的传播起到了一种重要的就推动作用。At the beginning of the 20th century, Hubei suffered severe flooding. Refugees poured into Wuhan, and the city authorities struggled to cope with the situation. As law and order began to break down, revolutionary ideas began to spread and take hold. In 1904, Deng Xiaoxing's friend and sworn brother Wang Xing returned to the city with his mission to distribute revolutionary pamphlets and books. So, Almost everyone in the city knew about the revolutionaries and their ideas. The police stepped up their campaign against the revolutionaries. Shortly after his return in 1904, Wang Xing and his comrades. To plan to assassinate Zhang Zhidong and start an uprising in Changsha. However, Zhang Zhidong got wind of the plot, and the Wu Chang police swooped on the headquarters of the would-be revolutionaries. Also received a tip off. By the time the police arrived, they were long gone. While Deng Xiaoxi, Chen Jianfan, and Yang Shuji are just some of the best known, in fact, many other Japanese-trained police cadets played an active role in the revolution that overthrew the Qing Dynasty. In 1911, it goes to show that China's first modern police force really was something much more radical than its founder Zhang Zhidong had intended it to be. It was revolutionary. As for Zhang Zhidong, he was appointed Minister of War and left Wuhan in 1906. He died three years later. But despite the growing discontentment with the dynasty he served, Zhang Zhidong remained highly regarded in Wuhan. The Mao Bing Hall was built to commemorate his achievements as a politician and administrator. Deng Xiaoxi and his sworn brother were reunited 17 days after the beginning of the Wu Chang uprising. Wu Han was now the eye of a storm that was about to transform China forever. The years had already transformed Deng Xiaoxi. He was no longer a policeman working for the Qing. He was now a representative of the armed wing. Of the Hubei Revolutionary Movement, Wang Xing was about to be transformed too. In Wuhan, he received orders from his friend. He was no longer a wanted criminal on the run, but commander of the new revolutionary army. <laughs> 